Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's calls to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and the Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also be here. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Reading from the first chapter of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. Well, a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and the God, he separated the light from the darkness. The God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was morning, and there was evening, the first day. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. said, let there be light, and there was light. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Not too long ago, just a couple months ago, in fact, 
astronomers discovered an unidentifiable flying object entered into our solar system. Not my attention. It is the shape of a cigar. It has no discernible, sensible path. And like a moon or a piece of rock or a meteor or even a comet, this object came into the Milky Way at almost a 45 degree angle, then veered off in a V shape out the opposite way. Scientists hope to study it. They may never be able to catch up with it. It's going too fast. And they are puzzled by why it is shaped so cylindrical, why it doesn't have a coma after it, like a comet, a trail, what kind of minerals or materials might be on it or a part of it, why was it expelled from some other galaxy or some solar system into ours? First, it was classified as an asteroid, but in a historic move, NASA scientists reclassified it in November as an interstellar object. Some thought it could have been, naturally, some will always think this, it could have been a spacecraft, visitors. It could have been containing intelligent life, or maybe remnants of intelligent life. Maybe a fragment of another world just hurtling through space a sign of life elsewhere. But really, it is one of those remarkable scientific events that once again calls into question everything we believe about this world and everything we question about our existence and our role in the cosmos. Hawaiians discovered it, and the Hawaiians named it Oumuamua, which means messenger a distant land. This is more than just fun with science and astronomy. Like the supermoon, or even better, the great solar eclipse just a few months ago, it's another one of those rattling moments where the cosmos shakes us awake to the possibility and the promise beyond our Earth. It reminds us of how vast the universe is and keeps us in check by reminding us how small it fragile we are. And for us here today, maybe it serves to remind us of the sheer scope of God in creation. Now this also has everything to do with the feast we celebrate today, which comes right upon the heels of a not so unrelated feast. And in fact, that the two feasts are back to back day by day seems to be begging us to pay closer attention. Because yesterday was the Feast of the Epiphany, where we follow the Magi, who in turn follow that interstellar object in the sky. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Baptism of our Lord. We skip 30 years to Jesus' baptism in the River Jordan, where we celebrate the light that the Magi were looking for. The light the Christ child in Bethlehem became a light to the world. Of course, we mark this day with baptism. Baptism has everything to do with water. It has a little bit to do with oil. It has a lot to do with fire. But it has everything to do with light. Now, I'm always a bit at a loss when I have to lead a baptismal prep session like we did yesterday, because we only have a short amount of time to unpack everything that's going on in baptism. So I hope I did not fail you all yesterday. It is, first and foremost, initiation into the Christian family. That's probably all we need to say. But it's so much more. It is cleansing. It is freeing from the bondage of sin. It is participation in new life through Jesus Christ. Marks a change, but you can't see it. It is the heart of our faith, and together with our weekly nourishment here at the table and in the Eucharist, it is like the second sun in a binary sunrise, the Episcopal arm of faith. Everything we do stems out of baptism, and it is nothing if not pure joy and amazing grace. How on earth can you jam all of that into a prep session? I dare you. How can you jam it all in a lifetime? So baptism is all those things, 
and it is also light. Like the light of Christ, the Paschal candle, which is lit, I promise, I can see it. The Paschal candle trots over right here next to the font, and the light of our baptism goes then beyond words. It is perhaps the greatest metaphor marking outwardly with water, oil, and fire. Something that is happening internally and spiritually. In my eyes, then, it may be perhaps the greatest sacrament. Like the light in the universe that started it all, a little burst of God's love exploded in the Big Bang and initiated all creation. And light separated the darkness. Light did not take over the darkness. The text is very clear. Light interrupted the darkness, and the darkness remains in harmony with the light. But it split the darkness just like the heavens are split in Mark's gospel, allowing the Spirit to descend upon Jesus. It is split in the same way that the temple curtains in Jerusalem will tear at the end of Mark's gospel, the moment of Jesus' death on the cross. When that happens, when that interstellar moment happens and the skies separate and the Spirit descends upon Jesus at his baptism, something interesting happens. The text becomes very, very intriguing. God says, you are beloved in whom I am well pleased. The other gospel accounts of Jesus' baptism Claim these words of God to all with ears to listen, everyone present at the River Jordan, all of us. Not in Mark. In Mark's gospel, profoundly, words seem to be spoken only to Jesus. It opens up a strand of theology I am quite sympathetic to, a possibility that perhaps Jesus may not have fully known who he was or what he was supposed to do until that moment of our baptism. And if that is the case, then Jesus is even that much more just like all of us, awaiting a call to serve God, a call that commences when that water touches our head and is renewed every time we stand and say our baptismal covenant together again. Renewing our baptismal covenant takes us back to our own aha moment where we are awakened just like Jesus at the River Jordan opening our eyes through the water to see the possibility of fresh light <coughs> every now and then science renews that same spirit in us and our scientists shine a light on something about life beyond our world they give us a glimpse into a bigger picture illuminating for us the incredible, expansive possibility that lies just out there in the horizon, in God's ultimate garden. So, yes, there is a lot to say about baptism. There's a lot to say about the epiphany. A lot in between, a lot beyond. But not enough time to do it. When that is the case, I rely on the poets, artists, to help us bridge the gap. So these are the words I leave you with from the contemporary poet Malcolm Wheat. Beginning here, we glimpse the three in one. The river runs, the clouds are torn apart. The Father speaks, the Spirit and the Son reveals to us the single loving heart that beats behind the beam of all things and calls and keeps and kindles us to light. The dove descends, the spirit soars and sings, you are my beloved, you are my delight. In that quick light and life, as water spills and streams around the man like quickening rain, the voice that made the universe reveals the God and man who makes it new again. He calls us to step into that river die and rise and live and love forever. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
congregation may be seated. I ask the baptismal families to remain standing. Candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. him as your Savior. I do. You put your whole trust in his grace and love. I do. You promise to follow and obey him as your Lord. I do. Now ask the congregation to please stand. And now ask all of you, the you who witness these vows, do all in your power to support these children in their life in Christ. We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. We believe in God the Father. You believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. 
with you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. And your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who hear are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Receive the light of Christ and shine as a light of the world, the glory of God. Amen. Child. Riley Ray, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Riley Ray, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Riley Ray, receive the light of Christ and shine as a light in the world to the glory of God. Child. James Swinson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. James Swinson, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Swinson, you were sealed, but well, you already did that. James Swinson, <laughs> receive the light of Christ and shine as a light in the world, the glory of God. Courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and a gift of joy and wonder in all your works. 
Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ your God. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. First, we party, and tonight is the Golden Globes, and I know you all will be watching. <laughs> we don't want the celebrities to have all the fun, so we are doing a two-part movie series. We did it already at 10 o'clock today in, in Adult Forum Hour. We talked about baptism in movies. Uh, we did record it. We'll put it on the website this week. Next week, we'll continue the series, and I do hope you will uh, come join us uh, to continue to talk about God and the movies. Thank you. Part one was fabulous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Just a quick reminder, first of all, that youth group starts back tonight. You guys can find the information in the bulletin today about that, all the details. Um, also, I want to highlight that on January 28th at 10 o'clock, we're having a meeting for uh, essentially the kickoff for our youth confirmation program this spring. So any students in grade 7 or higher who are interested in participating in youth confirmation, um, you and your parents plan to attend that meeting. We'll tell you all about it and get, get the party started. As Greg said, I'm kind of in a party mood. Um, but yeah, so plan to come to that. If you have any questions, reach out to me. And finally, um, two weeks from today, I've got lunch covered, y'all. We are having a spaghetti lunch, and you should just plan to stick around after church and go to Norton Hall. This is a fundraiser for our youth pilgrimage to Iceland this summer. It's a lot of fun. The spaghetti is going to be great. I'm not making it. Um, it's going to be awesome. So it's a really good time. We just get to hang out after church and socialize and eat good food. So please plan to attend that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I like uh, three lectures this uh, January that you want to mark your calendar. So the St. Paul's Foundation Sunday is the 21st, and the middle of that week is our annual Latrobe lecture, and then on the Sunday, the 28th, uh, is the annual Martha J. Horn lecture, all not to be missed. So please uh, do mark your calendars. Uh, the last announcement I have is a sad one. Since we have not uh, had the prayers of the people given a baptism today, didn't pray uh, for Vance Hall, who died yesterday on the Feast of the Epiphany. Uh, service arrangements have not been uh, made yet, but please watch your emails. As soon as they are made, we'll get that out to you. And let's uh, keep uh, Aunt and Julia and their family in our prayers. I welcome any who are visiting with us today for the first time. We're so pleased that you're here, particularly those here for the baptisms. What follows in our celebration now is the Lord's Supper. It is God's feast. It is for all of God's people. Now make our offerings and ascribe unto the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his court. <laughs>
pray to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Thus in Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, forever singing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
gifts of God for the people of God, take it in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith. Give thanks to God.
to love and serve the Lord. Thanks to love and serve the Lord.